going on everyone my name is obi and welcome back to the courtside financial podcast where we talk about business and technology today is october 21st and look i know most of you guys are here for neo and trust me we're going to get into it but we got to understand that what's happening with neo right now is not something that happens in a vacuum this is about execution at scale this is about whether the company can go from promising the moon to actually building the rocket so buckle up because we're diving into some numbers that quite frankly i didn't think that we'd see this soon let me hit you with something right off the top 10,600 vehicles delivered in one week october 13th to 19th the second highest weekly delivery total in neo's history now i know what you guys are thinking obi you're a neo bull of course you're hyped about this but hold on let me give you some context this isn't just about one week august was 31,305 vehicles september was 34,749 vehicles and they're targeting a 50,000 a vehicle monthly average for Q4. That's not incremental growth. That's a different gear entirely. Here's what makes this interesting from a business perspective. They're doing this across three brands now. Their core brand, Neo, delivered 4,000 vehicles in one week. Envo, more than 5,000. And Firefly, their newest brand, 1,500 units. That's brand diversification working in real time. But here's something that um, I discussed yesterday that really caught my attention. Their CEO and chairman, William Lee, doubled down on them achieving profitability this quarter, not next year, not in a few years, this quarter. And with these numbers, that might actually be possible. So how are they actually going to do this? Because anyone can say they're going to deliver 50,000 vehicles in a month. Execution is what actually matters. Here's what's happening behind the scenes. Neo quietly began production in their third factory in Hefei, China, specifically in Changfeng County. We're talking about 1,600 acres of production capacity. So to put that into perspective, that's nearly 6.5 square kilometers. That's not a factory. That's a manufacturing city. And get this, in a letter dated September 29th that just went public, the company said they need to fill about 1,000 vacancies before the end of October because, and I quote, orders for their last models are booming. Now let's talk about what booming actually means. The three-row ES8 SUV six month delivery wait the envo l60 and l90 over two months these aren't artificial scarcity tactics this is genuine demand outpacing supply and here's where things get interesting sun shao jun from the car fans platform noted that weekly deliveries of the l90 surpassed 3500 units with production capacity up 50 percent from last month the es8 has officially begun ramping up that's the difference between launching a product and scaling a product now let's talk about why this matters beyond just neo bulls because the envo l60 is where things get philosophical philosophically interesting. The vehicle is explicitly positioned as a Model Y competitor. Mid-size electric crossover, but here's where Neo is playing a completely different game. 149,900 Ren starting price. That's roughly 21,200 US dollars without the battery. With the battery, 206,900 Ren, about 29,300. So either way, you're thousands less than a Model Y. But Obi, how do you sell a car without a battery? For those of you who are new to the channel and might be asking that, I'm glad that you asked. Because this is where a battery as a service becomes more than just a cool concept. It becomes a business model disruption. With battery as a service, you're not buying the battery pack. You're subscribing to it. A monthly fee grants you access to over 2,000 battery swap stations across China. And here's the kicker, a three minute swap time. So you're not waiting 30 minutes at a supercharger. You're pulling in, swapping the pack, and you're gone. That's a gas station experience. Now, some of you might be skeptical. That sounds complicated. That sounds like infrastructure dependence. And you're right. That is infrastructure dependence, but that's also the most. Once you have 2,000 stations and you're expanding in Europe by late 2025, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East in 2026, that's not a feature, that's a network effect. So let's bring this back to what William Lee told his managers to focus on. Three priorities. One was to boost sales of key models, the third generation ES8 and the Envo L90. Check. We're seeing that happen in real time. Two was to strengthen supply chain stability and cost reduction. This is the unsexy part that actually matters. You can't hit 50,000 deliveries with unstable supply chain. You just can't. Three was ensure timely high quality software updates. This is to keep consumers engaged post sale because in the EV world, the sale of the 
A vehicle isn't the end of the relationship, it's just the beginning. Oh, and one more data point that I found fascinating. The ET5 Touring, their station wagon, is now the best-selling vehicle in the Neo lineup. It surpassed the entire entry-level ES6 SUV. They even launched a limited edition capped at 555 units. So that tells me something about product market fit. Station wagons aren't supposed to be best-sellers in the SUV era, but here we are. So here's what I'm watching going forward and where objectivity matters for us Neo Bulls. Can they actually hit that 150,000 uh, Q4 target. Let's do the math. They need to average 50,000 units per month. October is already tracking pretty well based on the numbers, but November and December, that's when we'll see if supply chain can actually keep up with demand. Second, profitability in Q4, that would be a massive inflection point. Not just for NEO, but for the in for the entire Chinese EV narrative. Because if NEO can prove you can be profitable while scaling three brands, while building out battery swap infrastructure, while expanding internationally, that definitely rewrites assumptions. Third is international expansion by of Envo. Europe by late 2025, that's basically now. If that actually happens, if they can um, navigate regulatory hurdles and uh, continue with battery, expand, battery swap expansion in Europe, that changes the game entirely. Look, I'm a Neo Bull, I own the stock, but what excites me here isn't blind optimism. It's it's watching a company potentially transition from the promise phase to the execution phase. 10,600 vehicles in a week, that's not a fluke. Third factory ramping isn't a headline. It's infrastructure. Battery as a service expanding internationally isn't hype. It's the moat. Are there risks? Absolutely. Supply chain, international expansion, regulatory hurdles. Competition isn't sleeping, but right now in this moment, the numbers are speaking. And they're saying something that I haven't heard them say before. Neo is scaling. That's it for today's episode. If you found value in this, make sure that you're subscribed. Click the notification bell icon, share the video, leave a comment down below, hit the like button. All your engagement really does go a long way in helping out the channel, helping us to continue to make these free videos and put out education for you guys. It also pushes it to a broader audience so more people can learn. We'll see you in the next episode of Courtside Financial. This is Obi signing off. Have a good one. Happy Wednesday. Goodbye. Happy Tuesday, actually. Goodbye.